This is Movies in Contemplation with Jirak and... Oh, am I talking to Jesus, you? yeah. Hey, everybody, welcome back. Welcome Hi. back. This is Jirak and Callie, so uh, let's uh, get going on here. Yes, this time it is my pick, and I chose us to watch White Oleander. It came out in 2002. It started out as a book by Janet Fitch, which is funny. It was published in 1999, and then the movie came out pretty quick. Like two years after, three years, two years, four years? How many years is it? 1999 to 2002. 1999, 2000, 2001, 2002. So I was right. Three. Three you were years. you were right. Okay. That wasn't questioning. Well, thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, but like, yeah, when this book came out, it skyrocketed. It got like Oprah's little sticker, and it was like a best-selling Oprah's seal of approval. Seal of approval. The book was being passed around, and they were everyone was like really jazzed to get this movie going. Yeah. And it's stars Allison Lohman, Michelle Pfeiffer, Robin Wright, and Renee Zellweger. So this is a heavy female cast. Yeah. Really, if you, if you think about it, like the time, like 2002, that's unheard of mm-hmm. to have a cast of just strong women. It is, yeah. They... They all did a really good job. Uh, before we get into it, let's talk about the wine real quick. Oh my god! Let's how, talk about the wine. How dare I? I apologize. And then we'll uh, and then we'll jump in the water here. Yep. So the wine that we uh, that was chosen, uh, Black Ink. Yes, this is actually one of our favorite red blend wines. It's really decently priced. Yeah. It's It's hardly Reasonable. it hardly ever goes above like twelve bucks. Mm, yeah. That's probably like the most it will cost actually. Yeah, it's fairly cheap and it's really good. Really good. Uh, really good dry. Really good taste. Yeah, definitely our taste. Really, you really taste the fruity bouquet. Hmm. The tannins. The tannins. Um. All right. So. White Oleander, what does this movie mean to you? My God, that is a, oh, that's a big, big question. Yeah. It means the world to me, yeah. actually. I've read the book over and over. I have things highlighted. I have uh, pages marked. I got the book around the same time the movie came out. I wasn't aware of the movie, mm-hmm. but this came out around, I was in high school, you were probably a fetus, but the fuck? um, but yeah, it really stuck with me because it delved into the relationship between parents, mm-hmm. and in this one, it's the mother and the daughter relationship, and what happens when the daughter starts to grow up, and when do the parents just let the child go and make their own decisions, yeah, and stop, you know, I know what's best for you, you know, just learn from me, it's like no. Learn. She has to learn. Learn for yourself. For yourself and yeah. learn from your mistakes. Mm-hmm. It dealt with a lot of uh, situations that I really connected with. And still to this day, like even when I, as soon as I told you that I wanted to do this, yeah. I even went back and I started rereading. Rereading the book. Rereading the through. book. Yeah, yeah I, was, I was studying because it's been a while since I read the book. It's probably been like, like four years since I've read the book. Yeah. But we're... I mainly want to talk about the movie, and then I'll chime in certain things about the yeah, book. Yeah, because I don't know anything about the book whatsoever. Right. I, I mean, I barely know the movie, per se. Yeah. So, I, I can tell one thing I will say. I, I will say, starting off, I can already tell, just by watching the film, that this was probably a better book than it was a movie. Yes. And I will say I will say that at the beginning. <clears throat> so... Getting on here, um, I do like, I love the soundtrack, by the way. Yes. I love the soundtrack of this movie. This movie soundtrack was amazing. I liked a lot of the camera shots. I liked a lot of the angles. I liked everything. The beginning, her monologue and whatnot was, uh, I liked the monologue. I was a little confused by all the briefcases and shit. Obviously, we'll get there. Right. Um, It's a journey. But I loved the shot of the uh, palms waving in the wind. Yes. In that Los Angeles breeze. Yeah, well, the Santa. Anna wins there's a they call it the devil wind yeah and around that time people always say oh uh, because of the it was it was the winds that made them do it like around this time this is when lovers kill, uh, kill each other and they blame it on the wind hmm 
Yeah, it's something about they say like like the Santa Ana winds have like has like or some like shit. no, it has like positive ions and it overcharges the body and it also has like serotonin in it, so oh. it kind of kind of get the people a little more hyper and tense. Ready? And it, yeah, amped. Amped. God. No wonder why when I drank, I'd try to pull freaking uh, meters out of the ground. Yeah, parking meters? Mm -hmm. I wish I was there for that one. Yeah. But yeah, in the beginning, you see, you don't really see Astrid, uh, the main character. It's the main focus of the whole book and the movie. Everything is through Astrid's point of view. And Astrid is who? Allison Lohman. Allison Lohman. Yeah, this was like this was her breakout role. Well, she was rightfully phenomenal so. in it. So I mean, hell. She, yeah, she was one of the many actresses that she could, and she was born in 1979. But she had to play. That she looks. Yeah. Even she, even now she yeah, looks she had so to, young. She had to, throughout the movie. She started at age twelve, and then she ended in her. I'm gonna assume twenty twenty one, and could have fooled me. Yeah. So we got the Santa Ana winds. Um, yeah, they live in Venice Beach. Yeah, blown in the breeze, mm -hmm. and then we see uh, Michelle Pfeiffer. Yes, Ingrid. Ingrid on the roof of their house, mm -hmm. I assume. Yeah. And she's sitting there and she's like, oh, come here, watch the winds with me. This is the best place to feel it. Mm -hmm. And uh, Astrid is like, no, it's fine from here. No. Yeah, she's scared. Yeah, she's like, mom. And then she just pulls her ass into her and starts waving her hair and doing that whole mother knows best type routine Coddling shit. Coddling kind yeah. of thing. And just brushing her hair. And having her, like, Astrid's head on her breast. Like, oh. You know, yeah. The, the only word I can think of is, like coddle just it's about right it's about so right, you yeah. got that going on so, and how old now was well, she supposed to be 12 she was supposed to be 12 at that, that point at that point Okay, interesting. So, she's 12. Uh, Astrid's talking about all the shit about her mom, saying how guys shouldn't spend the night and all of this crap about guys. Yeah, Ingrid had a set of rules for men. Yeah. And it was give them the chase, never let them spend the night, don't let them see your vulnerability. Right. It's, Ingrid is a very interesting character, and see, for sure. And this, is, and this is interesting, because you did tell me that Billy Connolly was in this film i did fucking barely but he was in the film he and was. I was a little upsetting a little upsetting that i barely got well him. if you think about it all the other men in the movie are barely in it well that's true and i don't mind that a name like billy Connolly, yeah in his two lines were i'm fucking kidding you fucking bitch and he's just going on it, and mm -hmm. it's literally all we got with him. The rest is just body, yeah. right? Yeah, he was pretty much just... He, he was just a face. He, he was a name. Yeah, he was a body It was almost and a like face. they used his name. So yeah. you got Billy Connolly in there, and he's whatever is nuts. So she's after Billy Connolly. So she wants yeah. a piece of the Scottish pie. Well, uh, a piece of the Scottish... See, uh, and this is where they didn't show... Like in the book, you get to learn more about their relationship right. and how they started dating. He went after her. And she... You know, if you think about it, I mean, think, fuck, Michelle Pfeiffer? She is the most, one of the most beautiful women out there. Yeah, she's and gorgeous. she was the first person they thought of for this role. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know what? What's funny is that... No one else could have done this, I don't think. Thinking about it, I was even thinking about this on my own time. Um, I was like, I, I was trying to put together who I could see in this role, and mm -hmm. I really couldn't. Yeah. I really could not put it in because I was just like, man, Michelle Pfeiffer was just so good. Perfect. She was, she was too good for it, and I just, I can't, I can't find anyone else who could play this. Yeah, and from the behind the scenes, like she even said, like it was a tough role to do because yeah. she's never played anyone so intense yeah. like her. But man, she did her fucking homework. She did. Yeah. Yeah, but. Uh, yeah, Billy Connolly, his character's name is Barry. He is not someone that Ingrid would typically date. He's mm -hmm. a little overweight. He wears, like, Hawaiian shirts. He's loud. He's... Yeah, so my thing was, so with him, with this Barry. So we've got her all over Barry. And she's playing that game of cat and mouse with him, even at work. Yes. Barry calls her. He's trying to call her. He's trying to get older. Oh, tell him I'm out and I fell off a mountain or whatever she yeah. says. <laughs> or I'm, I'm hiking. Oh, Barry, she's still out of town. Yeah. You know, that shit. And she kind of like looks at her daughter and gives yeah. her that look like, see? Right. That's now, all that it as, takes. now, as of now, so you got that going on. And then, now, this is what was confusing the shit out of me with the movie. The movie kept jumping. 
Yes. It was doing a lot of jumping for me, and I was like, what is going on? We're, we're here, we're playing hard to get, and then we're talking about men should never spend the night. You know, oh, Barry's going to take us to breakfast. Barry spent the night. Yeah. You know, yeah, he spent the night. And then we see them having breakfast. Astrid's just hanging back. And now we're in the car. We're going to visit Barry. Barry comes out in his robe, lets her in, and is all like, yeah, come on in. And then she comes out. Well, before that, there is another scene where, where it's Astrid and her mom. And Astrid's like, he... He's probably at work. He never he oh, never calls yeah. when he's at work, and she's just all frustrated, and he doesn't call when he's getting what he wants from somebody else. Right, and, and that's, so again, one of those, what the fuck is going on because you're jumping for me. They, you know, yeah. you're doing so much jumping, I don't even know what's right from left. Yeah. Um. So So they get in the car. Yeah, they get like in the car, said, they drive to his house. To Barry's house, she yeah. She goes to go see him, and then Astrid has leaves, that. Leaves Astrid in the car. Well... And, I mean, to be fair, I remember many a times being 12, being left in the car. And Absolutely. Just, yeah, and just like, I mean, I never, st- well, maybe I did stare at the mirror and go, you're not my type. Yeah, she was trying to be type. like her mom. I mean, that's her idol. That's her hero. That She's a... No, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> and I liked that. I, yeah. I actually really did. It showed the 12-year-old side of, and obviously we're dealing with a woman who was clearly probably in her late 20s filming this shit, mid-20s. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's going to look a little goofy because you're playing 12. You're not my type. But it's hard to go back to imagining, imagining an actual 12-year-old sitting in a car doing that. Yeah, you're going to, it wouldn't be goofy to see that. I would, I would, yeah, I would do that. It wouldn't be goofy. Look myself in the mirror and just Well, do yeah, it. everybody would. Like you're favorite. practicing. Especially if you've never been with someone or if you've never even been on a date or kissed or done anything. Mm -hmm. You're going to practice. You're going to do it in your own time. So she's trying to get the hold of it and then she falls asleep. And I don't fucking know how she was left in a car with the heat off. You know, engine running, no window open. You're just passed out in the heat of los angeles hang yeah. that shit up <laughs> so um and then michelle pfeiffer gets back in the car and is like he made love to me and then he has a date so and then cut to now she's getting arrested mm-hmm. she's getting arrested and she's like oh i'll be back in an hour uh child services comes takes astrid and da 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 she kills barry Mm-hmm. Okay, and maybe we can get a little bit more of this information from the book of why. And I have all, I have because all the information. we do not know jack shit why she kills Barry in the movie. No. We know that obviously it makes you think that she killed Barry because of that situation. I feel like it would have been more than just he... Uh, left me to go on his date, like, or or he made love to me and told me to leave because he's seeing someone else. Well, I don't know. I I can only say from the movie aspect of what I saw. So you're playing hard to get with this guy, right? And being a guy, and I will say this, you can only play hard to get with someone for so long until they sit there and go, okay, if you're not going to show any interest, then I'm not interested. Guys like me, for example, like, I mean, if I, if you're going to sit there and play hard to get for me forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and never show any interest, then I'm not going to have any interest for you. So that, that that's just me. So for me, I'm feeling like Barry... She was playing this game of, I'm not going to answer the phone for Barry. I'm going to put him on, you know, hold all the time. Well, yeah, clearly he's going to see someone else. Well, what happened was she she slowly started to let her guard down. Ingrid isn't someone that throws her heart out. Yeah. But you don't really know this yet, but throughout the movie, you kind of learn really what kind of person Ingrid really is. She is not a good person. No. No, she's not. And you really do kind of see it. You see it with everything that she does within the movie. So I guess yeah. let's let's keep and, going. And I know the director and the people that were involved in the movie, they did tests where they kind of kind of explained a little bit about how Ingrid killed Barry, but that created more questions. And they, they said that they really wanted to just focus on where it starts for Astrid's journey. Right. Because everything is through Astrid's point of view. So, of course, like, as a 12-year-old child, a lot of things are going to be a blur. Like, she probably doesn't remember much about what happened as well because she was, you know, she's a kid and she's confused and it's her mom's. It's kind of like sit back and try to look at it through her perspective. 
Um, I don't know if you want to learn more about how Barry actually died and what Ingrid actually did, because they really don't. I mean, all I tell know you. is that, and, and they didn't really. They kind of make you guess what happened in the movie. So, what do you? Think? She put white oleander in his in his milk. Honestly, that that was pure uh, for show. Because that to me just didn't make sense. And no. and and you got the voice of the guy later in the middle film. You don't even see this, but you just hear this voice. Yeah, white oleanders are poisonous. I don't even know why people still keep them in their yards. Yeah, and that's... And it's like, where the where did you come from, number he, one? His, well, his part got cut. His name is Michael, I believe. He was the neighbor, and that was someone Astrid actually would hang out with oh, once really? in a while. Uh, there, He's actually in the trailer, I believe, but his part got his part got cut, unfortunately. Even the you know the director producers were like, yeah, we felt really bad. It wasn't, it wasn't anything that he did. It was a great performance, but we really wanted to... To just cut to the chase. But there, they... Well, for people like me that don't know jack shit about the book, nor the movie, nor anything... It was a mistake. You, you, just, you just screwed me over because I don't know anything. Like, I'll say it. You gotta spoon feed some people sometimes. You do, and, and I definitely, not a bad thing. And I definitely needed to be spoon fed for this movie. Pardon me while we pour the wine. Yes, we're pouring another glass. Um, Hope you're joining us. Yes. But, but if, um, if you're in the car, don't join Yeah, us. don't drink. Don't drink and drive, please. Um... So, she's so, uh, this doing is, her shit. Wait, this is... Let's just get to this now. This is how Ingrid kills Barry. You do see a scene beginning mid to the movie of Astrid and Ingrid before she got arrested driving. Mm-hmm. And Astrid goes, why do we have to go to Mexico to get this stuff? Like, what are we getting? And, uh... Ingrid says DMSO. She's like, what is that? Like, what's it for? And Ingrid doesn't really tell her. It's like, oh, all sorts of things. So what, she ODs them? No, 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 no. DMSO, it's this... Generally use it for arthritis, but I, I believe it's something that they mix drugs with. Almost like a... Like a like a thing where it helps drugs absorb through the skin. Oh shit! I think I'm in. I know where you're going with this. Yeah, and then Ingrid chops up the o- white, oleander. The white or- oleander and she boils it in hot water. She uses a bunch of other concoctions with it, and then she pretty much just mixed their concoction of white oleander and all the other greenery with the DSMO and put it like on his doorknob, put it on places where bears. Why get the hell did we? not put that in the movie folks I know. why the hell I did know. we fuck about with let's put a big ass flower in his milk and then let's go give it to him for his afternoon nap what yeah. the fuck was that yeah. that is so much better than fucking flour in a milk but that's so interesting when have you ever seen that in any other movie right that is so interesting like i'm not for murdering people but that's pretty fucking brilliant yeah that's i mean yeah it is yeah well and also like before that just ingrid just gets into this rage because he for whatever barry is he is a ladies man and he is not about to settle he likes to go out on other dates and ingrid pretty much just starts stalking him she rips up his clothes she uh deleted a yeah, bunch of files like playing hard to get, they were both playing hard to get apparently they were I yeah and let's go to that deleting file shit yeah. So that's why he goes and fucking breaks the window into her house and yeah. is freaking the fuck out mm-hmm. and she stabs him mm-hmm. because she was breaking files and knew his shit. Because I was so confused again. Yeah. Again, confused. I know. Like, wh- why are we now, we're having a we're having tea and crumpets and then next thing I'm, you fucking bitch, Ingrid, you fucking bitch, get over here, I'm going to strangle you, Ingrid. And then... And then and then he, she stabs him, breaks yeah. the fucking window. Like I was like, where did that come from? I know. Aren't you dead? Well, he's not dead yet. Well, I know at that point, obviously. <laughs> but it, but not... but he was already dead, and then we're seeing that scene. He's not quite dead. Yeah. Yeah, but you know that shit. But I was just like, "What the fuck?" Yeah. quite dead yet. The movie people wanted to get to Astrid's journey, and that's uh, through. I wish they would have slowed down. And I know they should have. And I've said it to myself. I've said it to other people. Just there are so many other ways they could have done it. And I want to wait to do that yeah. for the end. Oh yeah, yeah. Just to you know, if anyone out there has wants to you know get in on this idea let's do it yeah okay so let's jump to the first uh, to the first uh home 
The first foster, yeah. First foster. Uh, Astrid gets taken to foster care. Her mom gets sentenced to 35 to life. Yeah. Like, that's the minimum. Like, murder in the first degree. Right. So she get Astrid gets taken to Star. Her name's Star with two R's. Yeah. Lives in a trailer park Star. out in the desert. And just, uh, Robin... Oh, yeah, that, 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 if that doesn't say you deserve to be a foster parent, I don't know what does. Yeah, but, um, Star, she's, she's been saved. She used to yeah. be a stripper, a cokehead, an alcoholic, and, you know, who doesn't care if, yeah. you know, if I shove a coke up my nose? What if I, you know, shake my tits in someone else's face? Who's hurting? Well, it hurts us. It hurts us. And the, it hurts it Jesus. It hurts Jesus. The, the, the hypocritical Christian faith yeah. person. And her daughter loved calling her out on it. And yeah. I actually loved that. The daughter's great. <laughs> oh, yeah, she was. Yeah. She wasn't in it enough either. Oh, you hypocritical bitch. Yeah. Leave the do- leave the window open. Oh, you're going to know, Astrid. It's, you know, yeah, don't he- look at me like this. Because you're, 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 you're no different than I am. Yeah, and Star just, you know, it's just the preaching and, oh, are, have you been saved, Astrid? Yeah, have you You've, been saved? Yeah, you know, your personal savior. And Ingrid was all against religion. Yeah. Like, she wouldn't even let Astrid go to the Christmas pageant. You know, you kind of right. you kind of learn more about that as well. But it's just funny. Well, shit, Ingrid was pretty much against the school. Ag- yeah. Just ag- she wouldn't go to parents' might night. As well, might as well have homeschooled Astrid. Yeah. It's just funny when, like, Star takes her shopping and she's, you know, she's buying her bras and giving her all these, like, skimpy clothes that 12, 12 13-year-old girls should not be wearing. Oh, very Christian of her. Yes, yes. But then after the whole shopping and you know she's trying to adjust we meet ray who is star's boyfriend Mm -hmm. just boyfriend just boyfriend nothing else yeah and he's a he's a carpenter and how old would you say that ray was yeah. The, the actor or the... The, the or actor. Ray. Well, Ray and the actor. Well, Cole like, Hauser at that time had to have been... I'm, I'm going to say that Cole Hauser was probably in his maybe mid-30s to late 30s. Mid-30s, okay. That's what I'll say for Cole Hauser. Okay. Now, him as Ray, I might shoot the gun and say that he was probably in his late 20s. Late 20s? As Ray. Like, look-wise. Look-wise, I'll yeah. say, like, okay. mid to late 20s. Okay, yeah. For Ray. I can see that. Do you that know how, how old he was in the book? How old was he? Like... 48. 50s. He was in his 50s? Yeah. Okay, hang on. Back up. Okay. Back up. Now, and, and, and I wanted to say this because honestly, Cole Hauser, I loved him as Ray. Yes. Ray was actually one of my favorite things about this this movie was Ray. Down to earth character. Mm-hmm likable in every way like when star starts having her moments and starts doing her bullshit from the minute he met astrid he just kind of comes in and he's just like oh yeah you know uh star tells me uh, you know uh why you're here and she <laughs> astrid says that her mom killed her boyfriend or something and ray's comments just yeah well uh, that happens it is just like fuck man yeah like what a Wow, down to earth, dude. Like, not even phased. You know, it's not your fault, honey. I mean, yeah. It's just, that's life. Shit happens. You're going to the Jesus show, huh? Yeah, you're going to the Jesus yeah, show. Yeah, his, uh, God, what was his quote? In my opinion, if there's a God, he sure as hell ain't worth praying to. Right. That's like, his big oh my line God, in the movie. So interesting. Yeah. Such an interesting character. He is very. He is a very interesting character. And But to hear that he's in the book portrayed in his 50s. But he's still the same character. Right. It's just an age difference. Oh, well, difference. no. Yeah, just an age difference. Yeah. And I don't think that it would be any 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 much more different. I mean, Cole Hauser has such a maturity to him as an actor Absolutely. anyway. I mean, you know, um, I, I just, I really liked him. And honestly, there could be a lot of people that, that could play Ray. I really liked Cole playing him. Oh, he was great. But, uh... I do think that that would be even more interesting, though, to see um, an older Ray, especially mm-hmm. because Astrid falls for him and they kind of have a little thing. Yes, and they they mentioned that in the movie. It's because just the way it looks. Yeah. I mean, in the book... It's yeah, like you it, barely know. The only thing that gave it away was what Ingrid says later on, is that they actually did something. See, and that's when... That's the thing. You're, you're supposed to know yeah. earlier than that, but they don't show it. Yeah, which another... I, I understand. Movie fuck up. I understand where they did it, though. I mean, think about it. A twelve, thir- like third. Let's say she's about thirteen at this time. Yeah, thirteen-year-old girl and a man in her in his fifties having sex. Right. That's a really big pill to swallow for most people to 
witness. Mm -hmm. But when you think about it through Astrid's point of view, she, and you don't see it in the film, she fell in love with this man. Yeah. It was her first, and she talked about how they, in detail, talked about how they made love, and she really just cling to him and you'll see that throughout the film how she latches on to people and kind of takes on part of their the per, other person's persona which i really an, a, another thing that i really connected she does, with doesn't she she sure did yeah but um Moving on. before the relationship astrid gets baptized mm-hmm. you know she's been washed in the blood of the lamb yeah whatever they call it and astrid finally gets a letter from her mom and she gets to visit her yeah you uh see ingrid she still looks just as beautiful as she did when she got friggin' arrested and that was like that Except was she had a black eye well she, yeah she did have a little bit of a bruise here like on the side of her uh, temple and cheekbone because obviously getting orange is the new black up very in getting orange is the new black but she never allowed her appearance to change yeah. she never let herself go she was so just stuck on her outside appearance because that was a big uh, weapon for her was her appearance nice washed hair I mean she didn't have any makeup but still like she kept she took care of herself her teeth were still fine yeah and she can still and she still plays mind games inside the prison we don't really get to know a crazy amount of what goes on in the prison except for like the book when you get to read like parts of like letters mm-hmm. um, you can you start to see that Ingrid is a little of course she's just jealous that Astrid has a family and another woman to kind of look up to but Ingrid sees the cross yeah she's like oh what's this why are you wearing it it was the, uh, it was it just was a, a it was a present yeah. uh and Ingrid's just like how did this happen you know I raised you not a pack of bible thumping trailer trash and blah 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 and Astrid just kind of like she thinks for a minute and she's like no because Ingrid says I raised you to think for yourself yeah. And Astrid said, no, you raised me to think, think like, like you. you. Yeah. And I think uh, Astrid really got kind of woke for a minute. But Ingrid is so manipulative. manipulative. Yeah. She said, okay, you know, I get it. It's great you're trying to, you know, figure out what evil is and what's going on. But you know what? Like, evil is so tricky. It changes its form when you think you know it. But you you have to be alert like she always says we're the vikings yeah we're the ones that go into battle we don't care what happens not gonna lie i really liked that about her yeah it's probably the only thing i liked about her but yeah i did like that we are the vikings and you see when astrid leaves she takes off the cross you know Mm -hmm. her mom got into her she's like she's right you know i gotta you know i gotta viking up and and how funny how i guess you could call this symbolism or ironic how funny is that right after she rips off the cross is when Star starts losing her shit, at yes. least in the film. Yes, and I took the cross thing to kind of give her permission to be bad Ooh. and to kind of give in to her natural urges that one 13-year-old would have growing up. To yeah. one a man, to- a.k.a. Ray. Yes. But before the physical act actually happened, Star accuses Astrid of yeah, sleeping. Yeah, before it actually before happened. It even happened. She started doing it just because she's talking to Ray. Yeah. And Astrid uses the, I never had a father. I don't know. Like It's true, though. It, 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 it's so true. It's totally justified. It's true, though. You don't have a father. You don't know what having that figure of a man is. Yeah. You know, yeah. You're you're going to be. And, and he is showing. He wasn't necessarily giving advantage. Answers, no, not at all. But he was definitely like not being an ass and was being genuinely nice to yeah, this girl he, he, and, and to all the kids. Actually, yeah, he's a genuinely nice person. The only one I, you never see him with was um, it was Star's actual daughter. Yeah, well, she was a little older and rebellious teenager phase yeah. and and all that. But she, uh, Star wanted to take her back to social services. Yeah, like you know, what? I got your game, honey. You know, it takes one to know one kind of thing. Jesus and Christ. Uh, you're no kin to me. Right. So let's get rid of you. Yeah, so, but, but Astrid was able to talk herself out of it. Yeah. She even, like, if you when you look at her, she kind of turns into her mom for a second. Because she says, well, he, he, he might be mad at you because once he realizes that you sent me away because you're jealous, he's going to hate you. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah. I didn't even think about that. Like, you see those moments in the movie where she turns into her she 
mother. Ingrid, yeah. And that, it's, it's almost like, like Ingrid is like, that's when her Viking armor comes up. So Astrid gets to stay, but then the inevitable happened. Ray and Astrid begin to have a physical relationship. And in the book, Astrid really was the aggressor. I want to say like aggressive, but she was the one that initiated everything. And he tried to not give in to her advances, but he eventually did. Yeah. And in the movie... Like, they're at the, the trailer home by themselves with the pizza. And yeah. They give that look. And he says, this isn't right. And he kind of gives her that touch. Yeah, he does that. On the cheek. So touch. that's... That's when you're supposed to know, oh, okay, so they're now they're starting a physical relationship. Mm-hmm. And she goes into his work. Is everyone gone? Yeah, and then you obviously put two and two together. Yeah. but They the, bang in the open, unbuilt they do, Which house. they do in the book. Oh. Very detailed. Oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So... Okay, so all that, and then Star eventually loses her shit. Yeah, she starts drinking again. Beyond. Being violent. And and, um, she is all like, I'm going to cash her check! And then she shoots, shoots Astrid. Astrid. She, she shoots Astrid. She fucking her. shoots her. She shoots her in the damn shoulder. And then the kids call uh, 911. 911. Mm-hmm. And then Ray and Star are gone. They, they, they Bonnie they f- and Clyde. They flee. Yep. They Bonnie and Clyde that shit and they're gone. Uh, leave the kids. And now Astrid is uh, up to foster home number two. Um, No, she goes to oh, that's right. she McKinley goes to the... Hall. Mac, they yeah. call it. It's It's an orphanage. That's the only word I could think of. Yeah. For kids before they're 18, they can't find foster homes. And there's a lot you see in the movie. Oh, yeah. And Astrid right away gets into a fight because some chick's boyfriend looked at her. Like, guys were re- guys are really attracted to her. She's a young, pretty, innocent, intelligent. She's, uh, we didn't mention this earlier, but uh, in the movie, Astrid and Ingrid are artists. But in the, oh, yeah. yeah, in the book... Ingrid is actually a writer. Oh. But the uh, producers and thought, well, it's really boring to watch a writer write. Uh, so they, is it? I don't. I don't. Is they, it? They wanted to make it more of a visual thing. Ladies so, and gentlemen, is it? I, I don't, don't know. think so. I don't know. It's I just don't. me. But Astrid was really we the main. We just did the notebook, obviously, watching a writer isn't fucking boring. But look, listen, this Moving is on. a movie where they're trying to get an audience for not just people that read the book, but they also wanted people that didn't read the book. Well, they failed within the first 10 minutes, so I don't. <laughs> hey, I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with you there. But. See, the thing is, like, you don't see it. And when I tell you this stuff, everything's going to make so much more sense to you. It already is. Because in the book, Astrid goes to another house that they don't mention. They don't mention two, two, three other houses. Astrid, throughout the book, went through six different foster homes. And went through some hard shit. Harder than what we saw in the film? Harder than what we saw in the fucking film. You're kidding me. I promise you, it's bad. This poor kid kid tragic it, it's it's okay. a tragedy okay this is obviously going to be a longer episode i want it the is. worst you want the worst i want to know the worst book wise whatever <laughs> hit me well the next foster home she goes from some trailer park out in the desert to living in van nuys which is kind of like valley suburby mid like Middle, middle class, lower class I'd say area. Mid, middle, upper more middle. middle than more yeah, middle more, than more, lower. more middle than lower for sure. And she she mentioned that it was her first taste of the American family, mm. and it was like a blue collar family. The dad worked for some company, and the mom sold like Mary Kay products, and it, oh, it, they lived in a turquoise house. She always calls it the turquoise house. But Astrid pretty much becomes these people's like slave. She babysat the kids. She washed the dishes. She cooked the food. She died. What, what was the lady? She was name? Harry Potter and Cinderella. She all in the she world. really was. She was. She played that Cinderella role where she did everything. And next door lived a very interesting woman. Her name is Olivia. She, we find out she is an escort. Oh. Uh-huh. Yes. Very worldly. Astrid becomes obsessed with her, and Astrid tries to become friends with her. Yeah. And she. I, I again here's the thing like astrid well her when she got shot by star it was a lot worse in the book than they they didn't they barely showed what happened to her you know she got shot in the shoulder right. and boom now she's in mckinney hall like or whatever mcclellan hall mac mac whatever. we're calling it mac i can't remember the name she was in the hospital for 
a good while. Yeah. She had she needed time to recover. She started getting addicted to her pain pills mm -hmm. and like would run out before she was supposed to. She would smoke weed. Like there's a one there's one scene. And this is when after she found out Olivia was a, uh, an escort, she thought she could be Olivia. There were these like pimply, you know, adolescent boys smoking pot um at at a park where yeah. she was looking after the kids. And she's like, "Oh, what could I do? Like, you know, I don't I, I really could use some kind of weed." And she would smoke weed with Ray, so weed was not like a a new thing for her. Right. And and she went up to the guys and said, hey, um, can I have some of that weed? And they gave her a price. And she said, well, I only have like three bucks. And, and, one, then, they, one, and, one of the, and then one of them did. Yeah, one of the kids yep. said, suck my dick Jesus. and I'll, I'll give you. And she does it. She gives the kid, the baby girl, to one of the dudes. Hold, can you hold her? You know, if you, if you don't hold her, she's going to run away. Holy shit. And they're like, oh, well, uh, this kid, I don't remember his name, uh, Justin, he, he has a bunch of brothers and sisters, so he's, he's good with kids. Okay. Then he, then she goes like behind the bush, gives this kid a he blow job. Hetty. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. And it was a little, it was very a little detailed, but it was kind of funny because the kid goes, Hey, uh, my name is, uh, Sky, by the way, you know, if you ever want to hang out. Like, <laughs> She probably did something uh, real good for him. <laughs> My name's Sky, by the way. I, that's pro I know that's not his name. No, that's fine. I just yeah. think it's funny that he's, he's just, she's sitting there sucking him off. Hey, by the way. Yeah, like she's just doing it for the weed and he's like in love. Yeah, by the way, you know, while you're down there, uh, you want to get some coffee? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but she starts going to Olivia's house a lot and they they just like she brings Astrid into her world kind of not with like meeting men and like men would go to her house and she had like high end clients. Like, right. This chick has money. She has like different houses and you know she has lots of expensive clothing and amazing cars and Astrid really took to her and thought what it would be like to have her life, you know, uh, just using men for what they can give to her. And eventually, uh, and the, the thing you, you you learn about the people that she lives with, they're pretty racist. Uh -huh. They're white family, Olivia's black, and she just kind of says like the most, not like the crazy awful things, but she just like, you know, she's not very neighborly. Who? Olivia or the parent or the, the fosters? The fosters of oh, Astrid. Okay. okay. Well, because uh, Mel has this life that she's probably not super happy with. She gossips with her friends, then she sees Olivia on her own with expensive clothes and she leaves her house and gets to do what she wants. So obviously there's some form of jealousy there. Mm. So the best thing she can do is call her a name that's terrible. Right. But Olivia leaves and Astrid is just distraught. Like there was no note, there was no anything. Like she moves or just goes to one of her houses? Who, you don't know yet. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, you don't know where she is. But Astrid, I can't remember how, like, where she came from, but she was out walking home, and she gets attacked by a bunch of dogs. What? Yeah. Astrid does? Astrid does. By dogs? By dogs, in the neighborhood. What the fuck? Yeah, and she gets just ripped up on her face, her body, and she had to go to the hospital again and get stitches so Astrid was really really gets a lot more physically messed up than is portrayed in the movie yeah so she she does get a lot of scars emotionally and physically, physically. yeah holy shit yeah but god how did she end up leaving that house oh okay so olivia comes back and astrid she's like pissed she even like said like astrid says to herself like in the book you know i was acting like a spoiled child you know you didn't write you didn't do anything and olivia's like i just went out of town i'm sorry i didn't tell you but you know i i, I do have this is around like christmas time mm -hmm. you know, I, I do have a, a present for you and you know they kind of mend the relationship but Astrid ends up staying the night, and the Fosters are worried, and God, I, I can't fully remember, but she just gets taken away, I think, 
Mel, the foster mom, just says that she was, oh, that she was like drinking with the prostitute and smoking weed and pretty much being a prostitute. Yeah. Illegal. And that's illegal because she's a child. Mm -hmm. So she had, she got sent back. And I think that's when she goes to McKinney Hall. But um, that's another house that she went to. Interesting. But um, let's. So since we did that one, let's go to Renee Zellweger's. Well, no, 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 no. We we can't because we have to, we have to go to Mac. We got to go back to Mac. Yes. Oh, the boy toy. Okay, yeah, okay. Got yeah. it. Go back so, to So, Astrid, at this point, she is learning that she can do things with her looks, her her physical appearance. She's pretty and sweet, and a lot of guys are attracted. And it made a lot of the other girls jealous, so she would get beat up a lot. Mm-hmm. So she decides to chop off all her hair. You know, she's... To keep the guys from looking? Yeah. Okay, I didn't get that in the movie. Yeah, I, you I, don't get that because you I, don't I know. Just, I don't even know why she cut her hair off. She just cut her fucking hair off in the movie. Yeah, well, some people go through that as kind of like somewhat of a like a release. Like instead of just like when people have like a, like a nervous breakdown, a lot of people do chop I off mean, their shit, hair. I mean, shit, I kind of did it. I mean, when I had a breakdown, I just kind of shaved my head. Now I actually like my head shaved. So yeah, I had a moment where I, I chopped off my hair and by myself, and it's what's well, it's better than cutting your skin, right? But but she just kind of used it. To, she wanted to be ugly. Mm. She wanted to be left alone. She thought life's better without friends. Life's, you know, let me just get through life alone. Yeah. But she meets Paul Trout. And in the book, he's actually not as good looking as the actor. I can't, I know the, well, actor's, the, actor's, the actor's first name is Patrick. I can't think of his last name, but he was an almost famous. Yeah. Is he considered good looking? I guess. Uh, uh, I mean, he's not like Hollywood good looking, but he's like a cute Sweet. I guess, yeah. A good looking, long haired yeah. child. Yeah. And he approaches Astrid and they kind of develop a friendship because he's a cartoon artist, she's an artist. Mm. And uh, Paul Trout really was like her light. He was the same age as her. They could really connect because they're going through the same things. They see the world in a different way because they are artists. Yeah. They're outcasts, so they connected on that level. But then, here we go again, Astrid visits her mom. Mm. And, you know, like, there, there is always that moment with, I don't know how it is with guys and their fathers, but when, like, a daughter has a crush on, like, a new boy and wants to share her crush with her mom. Yeah. Like, oh, like, this is him. Like, oh, this is what he does. And, like, for example, like, with Astrid, she brings Ingrid Paul's notebook of all of his drawings. And, like, yeah, this is this one. And Ingrid goes, oh, yeah, they're great for what they are. And Astrid's like, what are they? Cartoons. That's art. Yeah, that's art. She's like, it's not, Astrid's like, it's not just cartoons. Like, he's a very good artist, like, defending him. And another big line in the movie and in the book, uh, I didn't mention this. A lot of the dialogue is actually in the book, oh, which is pretty cool. Ingrid says, you know, don't do it again, Astrid. Don't attach yourself to anyone who shows you the least bit of attention because you're lonely. What a bitch. I know. What a bitch. But it's like, yeah, she doesn't know this kid. Like... Ingrid is just so scared to lose her daughter that no no one's ever going to be good enough. No foster parent is going to be a better parent, obviously. And, you know, mother knows best. And Ingrid gets into her head again. And then Astrid gets assigned to another foster home and she's trying to act cold with Paul. And he's like, well, where are they sending you? I don't know. Like, like whatever. And Paul's mm. like, okay, well, you can write letters... They went to a comic book shop. Yeah, write them to the comic shop. Yeah, send and, letters and there. They'll hold them for me. Yeah, yeah. They can be like, you know, just at least write to each other. And Astrid almost leaves, but then she finally, like, kind of snaps back into herself and hugs him goodbye. Yeah. Which is great because... It was a cute moment. It was a cute moment because you know, okay, Astrid, you have to... This is a good person for you in your life and we don't really get to see a lot of detail about right. the relationship but if you think about the people she associated with most of them were adults she'd hardly would hang out with people that were her age and now we'll, now we go to now renee. we'll go to renee zellweger yeah her character is a struggling actress yeah, yeah. like most in la like most in la you but know, we were there we were there we were we were one of them absolutely yeah. but her husband does work in the industry 
industry and has a lot of money. Yeah, he's like a producer or something. Yeah, shit. he does yeah. something for television. Mm-hmm. So she gets to live up in like, I'm going to assume it was like Malibu. Yeah, I, I guess. Because they were near the beach. Yeah. And like either like Malibu, Manhattan Beach, somewhere that was close to the Hollywood area. Yeah. But very good neighborhood. Mm-hmm. And Renee Zellweger, gosh, she's so good in this too. Every woman in this movie is so Every, damn honestly, good. Honestly, I will say this. They hit the nail on the head with the with the casting. Oh they God. really they really did all the way around. Yeah. I love this scene because I know we can relate to it as well. Astrid gets to spend most of her time with Renee Zellweger's character, Claire. That's her name. Because her husband who works on TV, he's out on location all the time. So Claire is by herself a lot. So you find out that she's unable to have children. Yeah. And that's why uh, they're adopted. They adopt. And there's this scene where they're watching an old film of Claire, which it's actually one of Renee Zellweger's old movies. It was one of like the, I think it was like a Texas Chainsaw or some type of slasher movie. It looked like something like that. But it was an actual movie that Renee Renee Zellweger was actually in. No shit! Then it had to have been Texas Chainsaw. Like like the... Like the third or the second. Yeah, like one of the sequels. And Asher's like, God, like how do you do it? (laughs) And Claire's like, it's just such a nightmare. You take hours to get ready. Make up hair, clothes, and you drive two hours to the location. And then you get there and they look at you for two seconds and decide and they, and decide if they want you or not yeah like they they tell you you're too something yep old. if we had a nickel for every time we heard that shit yeah. we'd be richer than anybody that got the fucking movie yeah it's always you're always too something yeah and then Astrid's like well then why do you still do it and Claire's like and what give up show business <laughs> <laughs> Like, yep. I don't think I... Like, are you kidding me? No. So you get to see a wonderful relationship grow between Astrid and Claire. Cause yeah. Because Claire is someone who's very confident in showing people love. Yeah. She gives Astrid, like, all the, the motherly attention that... She never got. She never got with her mom. Yeah. With Ingrid, it was all about Ingrid. Like... Astrid would just beg for attention, like something that had to do with just her. Mm-hmm. But it was always her mom. She was the famous this and that, and she was, you know, the perfect one. And Astrid was just kind of like in her shadow, just like, okay, well, I guess I'm just here. I'm just your daughter or whatever. Like she's her, she's her mother's daughter. Yeah. That's a whole, that's not a great place to be for a daughter. You know, it's just, you know, feeling like you're, yeah, you're in the background, you're in the shadows and it's never, it, you never get to have that moment of, I am my own person and I'm... But Claire was just someone totally different for Astrid and, like, uh... She even said, like, uh, Claire was like, what was the best day of your life? And Asher goes, today. Yeah. And all they did was run on the beach. Yeah. And Claire was just like, you know, come on, you can do it. Like, yeah. That was really sweet. That yeah. was a really sweet moment. Um, yeah. And then Claire's husband comes in town yeah. and starts to give off the typical going away guy thing yeah. that when we find out Renee Zellweger has been communicating with Ingrid yeah. behind um, Astrid back yeah she's communicating well you with can Ingrid. see with astrid she, when uh, the husband's name is mark yeah when he comes back she's kind of disappointed because she's so used to having claire to herself and, and then mark's back and mark's claire's back, all about mark. and yes it's all about mark yeah um well she never gets to see mark that's true and yeah right yeah i totally get that and i'm not saying that's a bad thing because it's either either Claire has one or the other. She's either with her husband or she's by herself. And what's really fucked up, and I don't know if this is fucked up or not, but I know with the whole Ingrid shit, like Ingrid was put the bug in Renee Zellweger's air, uh, ear of Mark cheating. But you don't necessarily know if he was or not, at least in the movie. I could be totally wrong and he's doing it in the book. You don't know. Mm. But in the movie, you really don't know. And I don't know if it's just because of the ER, the guy that fucking was in ER, ER Mark. Yeah. If he just is has that charisma of you kind of like him, but you don't yeah. at the same time. Because I didn't hate him in the movie. No. I mean, I really didn't hate him. And and honestly, when they were arguing, it was kind of hard to pick a side. Because they were arguing, and she hit him with the, is your girlfriend going to be there? Mm. He just looks at her, and he's just like, you know, I've, re- I've really had it with you. Like, mm. talking like that to me. Like, you just saying that that's what I'm doing. That's yeah. how I took it. And I that's don't know why. if that's just good acting on him, making you say, fuck. Or if that was the writing, per se, or what. 
let's let's just say that he wasn't. Right. But we slowly get to learn how Claire really is. She is a very insecure, insecure yeah. person and she's had issues in the past. We kind of learn that she has very deep depression. She, you know, she gets lonely and I hate to say it, she's she's a little on on the weak side. She's really good at taking care of other people, mm-hmm. but she can't take she can't take care of herself. And uh, Astrid wanted Claire a million miles away from Ingrid. And before the writing and the meeting, Ingrid kept prying information out of Astrid. I, I loved, I will say this. I loved the line where Ingrid says, you know, I want to meet her. And Astrid says, why? Why do you want to meet her? And she goes, because you don't want me to. Yes! I fucking loved that. I, I was know. like, woo! Because you can see Oof. Ingrid is getting so jealous yeah. about... Because now, well, Astrid's dressing like her now. Right. You know, she's she's wearing the light, pastel, flowy kind of colors. Her hair is slowly starting to grow back. And, um... But then we find out that Ingrid already started to write Claire. Yeah. But didn't tell Astrid. And Astrid's like, why didn't you tell me? Oh, well, because your mom told me not to tell you. Right. But then they meet. And Claire is going on and on. She's like, oh my god, like, you're... Your Polaroid installations were so good, and I love the article here. And Ingrid like turns to her to ask her to go. Oh yeah, why do you like the the art so much? Like yeah, you know, let's let's hear her, like really making her sound just stupid. And right. you know, Claire's kind of into astrology, and Ingrid's like, oh, I didn't know you were into into astrology. And Astrid's like, she doesn't have to be into astrology to know her signs. Exactly. Yeah, fuck yeah. Yeah. Love that. But and then there's that moment of oh. Uh, Astrid and I used to understand each other, but now she's become so secretive. Oh, well, me and Astrid don't hide anything. Yeah. yeah. She tells me everything. Like, I can so understand Astrid's, like, oh, like feeling of, oh, my God, just sh- please stop talking. Please stop talking. You're making it worse. And then Ingrid says, Astrid, will you give us a minute alone? And then she puts the bug in Claire's ear. Mm-hmm. And then the next day, Claire... Claire... ODs. Claire yeah. offs herself. She does. Yeah. She takes pills. Fucking head. She got yeah. in her fucking head. And of course, this devastated Astra because she finally met someone that really taught her unconditional love. Claire was just so supportive. She tried to get her in like art schools and taking classes and, and, and all that. Just really making it about, about Astra for once. Mm-hmm. You know, this is someone that's developing and children deserve to be in the spotlight while they're growing to gain confidence. Yeah. And after Claire's death, Astrid has to go back to Mac, but she visits her mom saying, Claire's dead. Yeah, I know. I know. Congratulations. Yeah, congratulations. Are you happy now? I'm just here to tell you bye. I'm leaving you here. I'm never, never seeing you again. Yeah. And uh, Ingrid's like, I only did it to protect you. I'm trying to save you from those evil people, you know, from the enemy. It's always like everyone else is the enemy. And Astrid turns around. It's like, those people aren't the enemy, mother. We are. We're the ones that kill people. We're the ones that are destroying people's lives. Do you not see it? Yeah. And it's funny because her mom was all like, you know, I'd rather see you in the shittiest situation than with Claire. Yeah. I'd rather see you in the shittiest situation. So to make this bit coming up really fucking quick. Yeah. And it obviously wasn't the worst situation that she was in in the book, but it's the worst situation in the movie. She chooses that one chick who was The Russian lady. The Russian. Uh, She chooses to go with the Russian fucking whatever she was, flea market woman, and is all like, I want to live with her. And then she changes her look. She Mm -hmm. starts going all like pretty much acid Betty. All of this crap just, you know, looks like, not shit, but she just dies. She's She's pale. She's black. She goes through a dark Emo-ish. Yeah, Emo-ish like phase. Grunge. Grunge. Well, yeah. Astrid is getting into her surroundings and the lawyer comes in. That's, hey, I'm Ingrid's lawyer. I Pretty much she wants uh, in, uh, Astrid to lie in court saying mm-hmm. that Barry was suicidal. He was this, this, and that. And Astrid's like, no, I don't want to do it. But uh, the foster uh, Raina, she said, you're so stupid. Like, you're trying to punish mom by just not speaking do you you want something from her make a deal take her money go get it 
Like, it, she didn't even, even, she didn't even really, like, mention money. I mean, she did, but she said, you want something from her? Go get it. Make, make a deal. Do something. She wanted the information of her life, yeah. Yes, because throughout the movie in the middle, Astrid sketches a picture of a woman's face with darker skin, darker curly hair, dark brown eyes, but she doesn't know who she is. In the book, it, it's kind of in a different way, but it's still the same thing. It's someone that she remembers, but she's not sure who. Yeah. So let's jump to... Let's jump um, to the final meeting. Yeah, of her and Ingrid, because this is important. This is. Um, she started, starts to try to get what she wants from yeah. her mom, which is information. Yeah, Astrid's like, I'll lie for you in court, but you have to answer these questions for me. Yeah. So you're going to have to help me with the questions because I only yes. remember the one, which is well, actually probably the most important question. Well, the first question was, why did you kill Barry? Yeah. And Ingrid's answer was pretty, uh, God, what's the word I'm thinking of? Very sociopathic yeah. way. Self-defense. He was killing me. Like, why? Because he... Because re- he wouldn't he, be with you? Because he rejected you? Yeah, right? Yeah, it was Shut just, up. Yeah. Moving on. And then <laughs> and then uh, Astrid started a- asking about her father because she doesn't know anything about most her father. Most important question yeah. I, to me. She I, even, I don't even think she, she didn't even know his name. Yeah, who was my dad. Yep. Yeah, and Ingrid's just like, oh my God, why do you always ask? It's ancient history. And Astrid's like, this is, that's my ancient history. Yeah, it's mine, not yours. Yeah. Like, why won't you? And then she says, you know what? Your father came to visit you when you were eight. And I told him to leave. I wouldn't let you. See, I wouldn't let him see you. Yeah, it's and too she, late. And she, holy shit, did Astrid lose it? She said he came to see me. Mm-hmm. Like he came to see me. Yeah, it wasn't about you. And she said, no, yeah, I wouldn't let him. And she said, makes you think that I, I wanted to know him. Yeah. I wanted to see him. Yeah. Like it's not about you, mother. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I can't imagine, even if, like if. I really can't. I yeah. can't imagine if I didn't know. Yeah, then you finally realize that Ingrid just, she finally breaks down and said, fine, yes, I, because she would say, oh, I really didn't love him. He was just some party guy. He was the one, he was the, the drug dealer. He had everything. Yeah. And uh, Astrid's like, you were obsessed with him. I read your journals. And Ingrid's like, fine, yes, I loved him. All right. You know, I thought we would be Adam and Eve in this garden house and baby makes three and, and whatever. And then Astrid said, well, why did you leave him? He and Ingrid me. says, he left me. So here's Ingrid. She cannot handle rejection. It just cuts to her ego so much. So now we know much. why she killed Barry, because he, Barry rejected her. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the biggest thing that Ingrid could have done to Astrid's dad is leave and never let him see Astrid. Yeah. And then after that, Astrid just asks, who's Annie? See, that I didn't even fucking know. That was hard. Yeah. Because I think that was not a movie thing. That was a book thing. It is a book thing. Well, you see in the movie, like I said uh, earlier, she was sketching a picture of a woman with dark hair and dark skin. See, I didn't even catch that shit. Yeah, well, it's a small moment. You see her sketch this face like twice and one of the girls that she is in foster with the russian lady at the end she's like who is she and she's like i don't know i think her name's annie but i think i knew her when i was young and i don't know yeah see i never caught it yeah in the book they do acid and go to some museum and then some type of flashback happens this uh, out of all this ingrid was the most reluctant to say this like if you saw in her face like what Who, who are you talking about but it was obvious like Oh, shit. Yeah. This is a real, oh, shit, I'm fucked moment. Mm -hmm. And then we finally found out that she was a neighbor who looked after kids. Like, she was kind of just like the neighborhood babysitter. Yeah. And one day, Ingrid wanted to go to the beach with friends, dropped Astrid off. One thing led to another. Someone had some house and some other place in L- in California. And Astrid's like, how long were you gone? And Ingrid says, a year, give or take a few months. She pretty much left her she, with Annie. Yeah. yeah, for like, yeah. Dropped her off so she can go yep. off and party with her friends. And yeah, then Ingrid to defend herself. You're not asking the right questions. Yeah. Ask Why me. did I come back? Yeah. It doesn't fucking matter, bitch. Don't try to justify yourself. Well, yeah. That's to me, at least. Well, it was just so, cra- like, just crazy. She's just like, can you just imagine, like, just 
being able to lay out in the sun all day and make love all you want instead of going, where's Astrid? Where's Astrid? What she's doing? Mommy, mommy, mommy. And she was like, I just wanted to throw you up against the wall. Rear up and yeah. take to your responsibilities. You have this child. If you're going to have a child, be fucking, you, that's yeah. your responsibility. Yeah. Kids drive you nuts. That's fine. But don't yeah. <laughs> drop them off at some neighbor and come back. But she's like, oh, but when I came back, you were at the porch. She was like, and you knew me. You had your hands out. Like, you were waiting for me. She's like, I've... I've and, been waiting for Yeah, forward. that's the constant in my, in my life is me waiting for you. Yeah. And then she's like, all right, fine. I'm going to, I'll lie for you in court. I'll do whatever. Just, you know, just fine. And, uh, and Ingrid's like, you know, you don't leave until I let you go. And the line Astrid says is, then let me go. Yeah. God, the, the biggest line, which I, it goes through my head constantly. It's, you look at me and you don't like what you see. Mm-hmm. But this is the price, mother. The price of belonging to you. Damn. This is what happens from being your daughter. Yeah. And she uh, reunites with Paul Trout, and the trial happens. Astrid waits in court, seems like for I don't know how long, and court lets out. And Astrid's like, oh, don't you need me to testify? And the lawyer said, your mom wanted me to leave you alone. And I lo- this is the one of the best moments like Michelle Pfeiffer, like I agree. Yes, she's, I agree. she's I in exactly white. She's getting cuffed. She turns her head, looks at Astrid. She has this like kind of like this stone, stone like mad moment. Mm-hmm. And then it's it just with her eyes, yeah. a, a slight smile with her eyes, and then it goes back to being cold again. Yeah, and then she because her daughter came. It's not that she well, came. Well, it's not even that she came. Yeah, she it's... well, she sacrificed her freedom so her child can be free. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, which is, it is different from the book. Mm-hmm. Oh, really? Uh, eventually, Ingrid does get out without Astrid's oh. testimony help. Um, but again, that's that's just different. Because, you know, they wanted, the, they wanted to wrap up the movie. And then it cuts to a couple years later, uh, Paul and Astrid are living in New York. In the, bo- in the book, they're living in Berlin. It's kind of a longer story at the end but the suitcases Mm -hmm. yeah let's jump the suitcases um hold on i got my got your notes i got my notes when you think about the suitcases like all throughout astrid's young adult life she's had to move Mm -hmm. she had to pack up all her shit and go somewhere different so the suitcases throughout you kind you didn't even catch that. yeah they are she's a collector Mm -hmm. when you think about that she takes. She pretty much takes a little bit and pieces of, of every place that she's been, and she made a diorama of her experience at each place that she's lived in. She had to start from the end to understand the beginning because it goes from the Russian lady's house to, I believe, Mac and Claire. Oh wow, and Star. that's right. She was working on. And in the beginning, Holy it was the shit. the mom's suitcase with yeah the i didn't even catch that mm-hmm. oh i didn't even catch that yeah. yeah and then you see her face as like you, you can totally see it now she's a woman she's you know she hasn't fully figured it out and yeah. her and paul trout they're starving artists but you know what she's living her life in the book the mom gets out and she's this famous person she has people wanting to propose to her she has a book deal she wants this and that astrid could totally go back to california and you know use her mom to help get her career going have money have security have this but she decides to be cold and hungry yeah so she could be herself be her own person and that's life yeah that is fucking life and that's the thing and like there's this in that moment when they they call like they called it like the, like the bo- the boxing match with the parents mm-hmm. and it's a critical role in every young person's life when they can face off against their parents to show that they're finally stronger. I know better. I'm like, not that I know better than you, but I, I'm an adult now and I, yeah, she's finally, I'm finally stronger. I'll, I will, I will agree to that hard. I, I, I will wholeheartedly agree to that. Yeah. That I, it, yeah. Yeah. Cause it's, I'm not, I mean, we're not parents, but I can understand through both sides that it, could be really hard to let go of wanting to 
you know, be in control of your kid because even though, even if you make the wrong decisions or the right decisions for the kid, that doesn't help them grow to be, be a, yeah, be a person. To be, a, yeah, to be a real person. Yeah. And there is going to always be that that boxing match mm-hmm. where there's the resistance and that moment of physically or mentally, whatever. Like I don't want to say defeat, but be like, no, I'm an adult now. Let me make my mistakes. Let me let me do this on my own. Yeah. And I can see that being really hard for parents to let go of because, you know, you want the best for your kids and you think that you know better, but in the end, you yeah. let me go. Let me go. Yeah. So yeah, that's White Oli Ander and it's funny when the movie came out in 2002, like honestly, I I think Michelle Pfeiffer could have gotten an Oscar yeah, for that, but that that year, Chicago came out, and that musical movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that overshadowed everything. I mean... And and the movie, the movie didn't do well box office-wise, but if you look at it on IMDb, it got a 7.1, and a Rotten Tomatoes a 69. So this is White Oleander? Yes, White Oleander. Okay. So I... This, this has taken me to another notebook. Bad decision. Really bad decisions. Fuck it. The right decisions could have made this a much better film. Yes. I think there were just a lot of really bad... Uh, Here's my idea. Should have, it should have been different. Yeah, please tell well, me your idea. My right. idea is they jumped too fast to getting this movie made. Yeah. Because the book was doing so well. They didn't allow... I think I'm, I'm already starting to know where you're going. Yeah, they didn't allow enough people to read the book. Yeah, it was three years, but shit, some people don't read books after they've been out for a long time or they didn't even know about it. Right. So let's say like today, in today's world, it would be perfect as a Netflix, Hulu, Amazon series. Yeah. Agreed. Mini series. Oh, agreed. Yeah. Like go through every, like we didn't go over the other foster. It doesn't matter because it was horrible. But we could have gone through so much more detail with this book. But we didn't have those back then, yeah. and, and I'm glad. I'm glad the movie was there. I'm glad it was there for me, and I was glad to see that it was nice to see a strong female cast. Yeah, and I think it was Michelle Pfeiffer's best best role. I'm gonna go ahead, and I'm gonna probably agree with you. Yeah, Alison Lohman got her kick from this, but. Once you read the book or learn more about the book, I think it's easier to appreciate the movie for what it is. Mm-hmm. It's just like the cliff notes of the book and getting to have a get a visual. Yeah. But unfortunately, they should have waited. Or it's not too late. People remake shit all the time. Let's get on this, people. Let's redo this. I agree. I'd like to see this as a show. I would too. I would stream the shit out of this. I would. I would like to see where they go with this. Because you don't really get to see what too much of what the characters, even yeah. especially Astrid, are thinking. Because mm-hmm. the whole thing is through Astrid's point of view, and we, when you read it, it's everything that's going through her mind, everything that's going through her physically, and her, you know, how she sees things in in this world that she got thrust into for so, yeah. you know, so fast. But. I can blabble and go on and on about this movie and book forever. Mm-hmm. So I think, do you think we've got... I think it's, yeah. We got it? I think we're there. Okay, so question five hours later. <laughs> Wouldn't you watch this movie without me? Movie, no. Movie, no. Okay. Book, yes. Okay. I would read the shit out of this book. I got especially one. from what you're telling me. Yeah. I would. I am actually really intrigued by the book. Awesome. So, I like that. if there's an audio book out there, I'm going to be listening to the bitch. Oh, there has to be. I um, would actually like to listen to the audio right. book. I'm so, interested to see who... Who, who voices. Yeah. That would be fucking amazing. We're looking that up. Yeah, so... What's what's your pick for me? You you haven't hinted a thing. No, because I've been in really deep thought. Okay. With uh, my pick. And now I, deep thought. I don't... Because this, watching this made me think of like my upbringing and made me think about me yeah and just and the only thing that i can think of is like the opposite Mm -hmm. like because this was so woman-based growing up Mm -hmm. the only thing that i can kind of think of is and of course book wise for me it would be the catcher in the rye 
mm-hmm. which they don't have a book of. They don't have a movie of. They don't, yeah, no, yeah, that's yeah, that is which interesting. You know, they should fucking have a movie of the Catcher in the Rye, but because that to me was shit. If, if if any any boy growing up should relate to the Catcher in the Rye, mm-hmm. but what I'm gonna say is, and this isn't necessarily a coming of age story that I'm about to choose. Okay, but this movie goes both ways for younger men and grown men okay so my choice for uh next pick is scent of a woman with the al pacino okay that is that is my choice okay. scent of a woman so that's gonna be another heavy hitter another heavy hitter we're going heavy yeah it's gonna be another it's, it's a dark darker comedy i mean it's, it's got comedic but it's, it's it can be heavy but that's my choice scent yeah. of a woman al pacino and, uh, fuck, I can't remember the, the kid's name. Chris O'Donnell? Chris O'Donnell. Yes. Thank you. Chris O'Donnell. I, I know you've seen me watching it before, but you've never watched I've it. I've seen you watch it before. I've never fully watched yeah. the movie. Hell, I think me and my dad watched it on Thanksgiving. Yeah, but I was And I actually, cooking. this movie, the, this is one of my dad, this, this movie for me, because my dad loves this movie. This was the one movie that I will always ne- re- think of my dad when mm-hmm. I watch. Because my dad would quote this movie and all of that. But we will get to that next week. Let's yes. go ahead and end it here. Because yes. it's, it's been coming long to a, enough. Coming to a close. We yeah. really were getting in deep here. We but did. We went book and movie this Book time. and movie, which I don't care. No. I love it. Yeah. It, um, really good. I, I am actually, I, I am more intrigued by the book than I was by the movie. I think the movie should have had a little bit more thought process and even show related there's so much Mm -hmm. to it that it could have shown a lot more so if they do redo it as a show i will gladly watch it me too but until then everybody thank you so much for uh joining us yes thank you so much and please if you like what you are hearing give us a a like a review we're all over social media movies and contemplation yeah and yeah let's i'm excited to do this again yeah really excited so everybody have a wonderful night thank you tits high tits high and bye (laughs) tits high and bye bye bye